Shall we minimize? We're about to listen to our doctor speak to us. Let me start by first commending the beautiful work that our guest lecturer did in taking us through the journey. From June 12, 1993 to June 12, 2012. 19 years in all. Of course, I am not surprised that the Priscilla Queer was able to articulate and propose tangible steps to be taken in order to keep going our current democracy. She was a frontline prayer player in that struggle as president of the Nigerian Bar Association. And of course, you won't be surprised if someone became a lawyer 45 years ago, when many of us in this room are not even born. You know what that means. She has got the necessary experience, she's got the necessary education, and she has the exposure to do things that ordinarily you will not associate with women if you locate women in that narrow prison that we always put them. So she's an inspiration for many of us who followed her lead. And I'm glad that she accepted when we approached her to deliver this new 12 lecture in a very, very short period. She wrote that lecture in less than 10 days when we approached her to do this. On June 12, 1993, Nigeria had a first globally agreed fairest, freest, and most credible election in a checkered history of existence. By all available facts, Chief M.Q. Wabiola won the election clearly and squarely and should be regarded today as an elected president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So any honor to Chief Wabiola, whether we name my own old university, the University of Lagos, or the National Stadium after him, anything sort of having his photograph in that hall of fame in Asu Rock as the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it would not be acceptable to those who voted genuinely and everybody won that election. All of this would fail into insignificance unless Nigeria, particularly our president, Acknowledging the fact that Nigerians freely, fairly, and credibly elected President Abiola as our president on June 12, 1993. As I said recently, it's very easy to forget history, especially when we no longer teach history in our schools. Many of my young colleagues who were protesting at the University of Lagos a couple of days ago, of course, were toddlers. Some of them were three to five years old in 1993. If they were even born at all, these days that 15 year old get to university. So it is understandable that they do not understand the enormity of the role played by Chief M.P. Wakula in getting us to the point we are in today. And I've said it without any shadow of a doubt that there will be no 1999 today if there was no 1993 in Nigeria. And those of us who are seen as beacons of hope today, we were produced by that struggle. I was declared a personal non grata in this country in 1995 and I couldn't even come home simply because I ran a radio station in defense of democracy 
I was accused of committing an offense called treasonable felony, and it was punishable by death at the time. Thank God I'm alive today. But being alive is not enough. It is what I do with that existence, with my presence in this time, to acknowledge that I actually stood on the shoulder of giants, and the most gigantic of those giants of the time was Kipenke Wabiola. And many of us who are today representatives of genuine democracy and freedom in the land must acknowledge this fact. That is why the least we could do is honor him with the declaration of today as a national public holiday. And it's going to happen. One by one by God, we're still counting. Only one state used to declare this day as a public holiday in this country in the last eight years. Today, in the whole of the Southwest, apart from one state in the Southwest, we have all declared today as a public holiday. And I assure you, don't ask me how, even that outstanding state, very, very soon, shall soon declare today as a public holiday. But we won't stop there. President Jonathan, if he really wants to have his name recorded in the book of history, as the president to have the courage of his conviction, not just the tokenism of the present attraction, he would also declare this a national holiday. After all, there are presidents in history. It was one of the most conservative presidents of the United States of America that declared the Martin Luther King Day, President Ronald Reagan, a Republican to the core. So you cannot accuse me of being an associate of Martin Luther King. But he saw the necessity of history. That was why he declared January 16 as the Martin Luther King Day in the United States of America. So I don't see any reason why President Ludwig Jonathan should not take the step he has taken, which I have had just to commend. Even though as a product of that university, I also felt he ought to have consulted the stakeholders on a much wider scale before naming the university for Shudabiola University. But I have no doubt in my mind that the enormity of the sacrifice that Shudabiola made for us to have today is not something that can be wished away and it is not something that deserves simply the renaming of the University of Lagos. The University of Lagos is there to many of us. I happened to have been at the University of Ife in 1987 I was on my way out when the university was named after Chief of Africa, Aula. Of course, just like now, the students trooped out in protest that they did not want the university named after of Africa. In fact, I recall a friend of mine, after the university was closed after that demonstration, a friend of mine took a uh, hitch the ride from a gentleman from the gate of the University of Ife to Lagos. And in the course of the discussion on the road to Ibadan, the gentleman asked the uh, students at the time why they were demonstrating. And the students said, well, it's unacceptable. How can they give our university after just one individual? Of course, as the students of today have done, many of the students at that time did not even know the enormity of the role to follow of play in the founding of that particular university at the time. So this gentleman got very angry. He was a product of free education. 
And of course, the man is from our part of the country. And he was coming from a city where he gave the, the right to be student. So before they got to Ibadan, they allowed the young man to say everything he wanted to say. He passed. He passed and said, you did not want the university named after Chimabaku Nawolo. You must be a bastard. You must be a fool. You must be an idiot. I will be riding in this car if there was no Chimabaku Nawolo. Get out of my car. I will not take you to where you are going again. And that really explains why the good that we all do will always live after us. Chief of Afro never anticipated that any monument would be named after him when he was doing the good he was doing. He just did what he felt was right. And what the Priscilla player has encapsulated in our speech, in our lecture, is the necessity for those invested in popular mandate with authority to really earn their stripes as leader, to do what the people want of them, to ensure that there is peace in the land through the provision of development and growth. Because there's a direct correlation, as she said, I agree fully with that, between development and security. Any society that has no security cannot have development and peace. And poverty is violent. Because when you are poor and you have no means of seeing yourself as a stakeholder in society, if you are acted on by by society, you are going to resort to any means necessary in order to earn yourself a place. And that is what Boko Haram means. Boko Haram is not religion, in my view. Boko Haram is not ethnicity. Boko Haram is poverty personified. And unless those of us invested with authority in Nigeria take up the government seriously and tackle the challenges of poverty and underdevelopment, we're going to be having more and more Boko Haram in our environment. And it is to this extent that I think it is absolutely important that those who have sacrificed, we must honor them. In order for those who are sacrificing today to know that posterity will not forget and forgive the roles that they are playing. That is an essential lesson that we must learn. That's how we do what we're doing in it. And that is why the old concept that Chief Adiola took from our leaders of your, from Chief Adiola of Afemiawolowo, in his farewell to poverty manifesto, is also what we are calling making poverty history in the state today. It is what our comrades and colleagues are committed to banishing poverty in Osho, in Lagos, in Oyo, in Oko. And very soon in the whole of Nigeria. We rest assured we are working on it. I'm sure you are all aware of my movement around the country very recently. We will not relent until those who can turn around this country tangibly, concretely, and without any doubt take charge in running the country for Nigeria. <laughs> The yellow 